Hello, Miles Maida here with more modern yoga movement videos for you. In this second part of our headstand sequence, we're going to do the headstand. And what's important to remember is we need a stable foundation. So that means mobile and stable shoulders, as well as strong arms, elbows, and wrists, as well as engagement of our myofascial core. So let's do a few exercises first to get us to feel what we need to do in our headstand. So sitting in any comfortable position, interlace your hands and place them on top of the crown. So just find what feels like the top of the crown, so the part of the head that will be on the floor. And on the inhale, just push down on the head gently and resist by lifting the spine and then relax. So no pressure. Let's do that again. Inhale, press the hands down and the spine will feel like it's growing up, pressing up against the hands and release. Let's do that a couple more times. Inhale. So we're lifting the pelvic floor, lifting the spine, exhale. And last one, pressing down. So this is what we want to feel in the headstand and release. So there's gonna be a little bit of pressure of the head on the floor and we want our spine to engage and to elongate in this inverted position. Okay, the next thing we can imagine we're upside down and we're going to have our hands in the position that we have them in, in dolphin. But instead of the palms squeezed together, they're open. So normally our little fingers are crossed. What we wanna do is just bring one of those little fingers inside the palm so that we have more of a flat surface when we place the arms on the floor. Now, if you imagine this is the top of your head, I'm gonna turn sideways for this part and this is the back of your head, you want to clasp your head more at this corner of the back of the head. So interlace your hands, that little finger tucks in, and place the hands more at the back corner of the head. Your hands will press in to the head a little bit, and your head will press back into the hands a little bit. What this does is it stabilizes and engages the muscles around the neck. So that's one piece we want to think about, but it's not too hard. It's, it's more gentle. Feel the engagement of your neck. Next, we want to feel the shoulders draw down and the elbows push up. And if you look at your elbows, they should be about shoulder width apart. So this is what we want to do in our headstand. So we feel a lift of the spine the hands pressing gently into the head, head pressing into the hands. Shoulders draw down the back and the elbows push up. So we want to be pushing with our arms. And relax. Okay. So those are the basics. Now, when you come up into a headstand, it's good to do it in steps. So we're gonna do four steps. One step is being able to lift the knees off the floor and press down with your toes. This will just help to lift the pelvis up. Second step is walking the feet closer to the head so the pelvis will go over the shoulders. The third step is being able to pull one knee at a time into your chest. That third step engages the abdominals. And then the fourth step is being able to pull both knees into the chest so that you can come all the way up. Now, if at any time you feel strain in the neck or you feel like you need to take a break, rest in child's pose. And it's important to rest in child's pose because if you're inverted, you don't want to turn your body upright immediately. You wanna be able to regulate the blood because the blood is going to be pooling in the upper body and in the head. So you want to be in child's pose at least for five breaths or so until you come upright. 
Okay, now we're ready to do our headstand practice. All right, sitting on the heels. So just like dolphin, we're going to bring our elbows to the floor, check the distance of the elbows by holding on to the upper arms, clasp the hands. Again, I always do this twice because my elbows will tend to slide out. And I've seen a lot of students' elbows will do that. So it's good to check twice. Open the palms, tuck that little finger in, and your thumbs are gonna be open. Place the top of the head on the floor, and you can take your time positioning yourself so it feels right. So the top of the head is on the floor. You should be able to, with your hands, pull against the head or push against the head, and your head should be able to press against the hands. Now you should also be able to press your forearms into the floor, your elbows, and your hands or wrists. So this is the basic position to begin. And it's good to take your time to feel like you're comfortably in this position. Okay, here's step one. Flex your feet, press your toes into the floor, press down so that you can lift your knees off the floor. And this is the beginning of the headstand. If you feel comfortable doing this, then we move on to step two. If not, rest in child's pose. Walk your feet closer towards your head and see if you can get your pelvis over the shoulders. Now this is gonna put a little bit more pressure on the head, so you want to have stronger arms. If you feel okay here, then we move on to step three. Pull one knee into the chest, engaging the abdominals. You can lift the pelvic floor. Let's do the other side. Pull the knee into the chest, engage the abdominals. And if that feels fine, then you can move on to step four. Pulling one knee into the chest, engage those deep abdominals. Now you wanna push your, with your toes so you can get your pelvis a little bit past the shoulders so your leg can float off the floor and then bring both knees into the chest. So this is our most basic headstand and you should have a nice stable foundation and no strain in the neck. If you do, come back down and rest. If you can do the headstand, draw your legs together and lift the knees. So the thighs are parallel to the floor. Then lift the knees higher. Your feet will stay close to your buttocks and then eventually extend the legs up. Now let's pay attention to our myofascial core. Let's draw the legs together, lifting. Lift the pelvic floor, center the pelvis. Use our deep abdominals. Feel the length of the spine so you're pressing down against the floor. And you're using your arms for stability. So your shoulders are moving away from each other. And just feel like you're stacking your bones so that you can balance and you're not making too much effort. So long neck. Press down with your forearms, elbows, wrists. And when you're ready to come down, inhale. Draw the legs together, exhale, bend the knees so the heels go towards the buttocks. Then lower the knees so the thighs are parallel to the floor. And then bring your knees towards your chest. And slowly lower your feet to the floor. And rest in child's pose. Stay here. After being inverted, you want to let the body regulate, let the blood circulate, taking our time. You can walk your hands back so your shoulders are relaxed, down away from your ears. Surrender the weight of your body, releasing onto the forehead, onto your legs. You can let your elbows release to the floor. Shoulders relax. 
and breathing long and deep into the sides of the ribs and into the back of the lungs. So after five or so breaths, you can stay here longer, of course. You inhale, draw the knees together. And on the exhale, roll up one vertebra at a time. And sit in a comfortable upright position. It's good to follow this up with a restorative shoulder stand. So line your back with your legs up against the wall and finish with a deep relaxation. If you want to practice headstand with a wall, the way I do it is when I am coming up into the headstand, my feet would be facing the wall. And if I were up in the headstand, I would be able to look at the wall. So instead of the back of my body, against the wall, it would be the front of my body facing the wall. So that way, when, uh, if you need support of the wall, you can walk your legs up or hold your feet on the wall and maintain a nice alignment. If you do it with your back against the wall, it'll tend to arch. That will not help us have proper alignment, even though it's a common way using the wall for support. I like doing it the other way, so the front of my body's facing the wall. And maybe I'll do a video of that in the future. Otherwise, thank you. That completes this sequence. Thank you very much for joining me for these modern yoga movement videos. If you liked this series, please hit the like button. If you want to know when new videos are available, hit the subscribe button. Feel free to share this with others. And if you'd like to be a supporter of these videos, then you can become a Patreon member. And that information is in the description below. Also, if you're interested in our yoga programs, as well as the retreat center here and the other programs that are offered, those links are in the description below as well. I'd like to thank my Patreon members for their support so that these videos can be made. I really appreciate it. And I look forward to sharing more with you in the future. Thank you.